Well, now to the football stars of the future and the next in our series of footballers, the next generation. Jeff Twentyman has been looking at our clubs around the region and how they're bringing on new talent, some as young as the age of six. <laughs> If we're out wide and you've beaten your man, try and get your head up as soon as you've gone round him. You know, the lads who, when they come in at eight, you know, six, seven, eight years of age, they all want to be pro footballers. Now, is that difficult to mark one-on-one -on -one in this win? Yeah. yeah, very difficult. But of course, the stats are, you know, highly against them actually making it. The harsh reality is just 1% of nine-year-olds taken on by professional clubs actually make the grade. It's certainly an incredibly competitive career path. The wannabe footballers and their parents make a huge commitment as they aspire to become professionals. You just quickly go and warm yourself up there. Oh, yeah. Good lads, good, good. All age groups train two or three nights a week. Away matches can mean a 7.30 start on Sunday mornings. At Cheltenham Town, they have a really clever way of developing their youngsters. Nines and tens especially will go right side, so they'll work from the back right back, right midfield, right side, and then play up front, right side. And then the next term, they'll swap round and play left side. We feel that it will develop their game uh, and understanding of all positions. Well, what they do really well here at Cheltenham is evolving the nine-year-olds through to 12-year-olds. They've got the small-sided goals, three-quarter size goals, then eventually they go to the full-size goals. So much better than Sunday League football, where they go from a small goal to the big goal and the poor goalkeeper is a mere dot in the goal frame, but this is really, really good. So how are we actually developing the players of tomorrow? The special one, Jose Mourinho, believes Spain produced youngsters to play football as if it was a kind of art form, whereas England would develop footballers to simply win matches. Our philosophy is technique, technique, technique. That's, that's the way we work right through to, to under-18s. If we think they're ready to play up and we can challenge them, that's what we like to do. It's not about winning, certainly not about winning at the younger age groups. Come and watch our under nines, our under tens, our under fifteens play. We all play the same way and it's our technical passing game. Well, those taken on at 16 in a full-time capacity are educated in sport-related subjects. The day and a half in the classroom is compulsory. At the end of the day, I want you to have selected the injury you're going to use and be able to work the way through of how you'd rehabilitate the player. Well, today's lesson was physiology, which included the diagnosis and treatment of injuries. Um, what grade the tear is, uh, how long ago you did it. He also gained coaching, first aid and refereeing qualifications. Obviously, like, the ratio of people making a professional is very low, so as long as you come in here, like, do your work, get it done and get the B-Tech, like, get two distinctions, just two A-levels, so... You come away with all the coaching and football and that, but plus you've got two A-levels in your back pocket. Like. Well, to me, the education is equally as important as the football. Statistics say that out of that classroom there, only one of the boys will actually be a professional footballer by the age of 21. So it's important to get good qualifications and prepare for life without professional football. Jeff Twentyman, BBC Points West.